This SKF training film is about taper roller bearings. A taper roller bearing consists of two separate parts. An inner ring complete with a set of tapered rollers secured by a pressed steel cage called the cone assembly and an outer ring called the cup. The cup and cone are mounted separately, the cup in the housing and the cone on the shaft. Only when they're assembled together do they form a complete bearing. Because taper roller bearings can only carry loads in one direction, they must be used in pairs, opposed to one another and adjusted together, then secured by a lock nut. Taper roller bearings are suitable for carrying combined radial and axial loads. Depending on the application, they can be assembled in back-to-back -back or face-to-face -face configurations. When mounting these bearings, they must always be assembled opposed to each other. They're particularly robust and are used where heavy loads and moderate speeds apply. This film shows the mounting and dismounting of an industrial taper roller application, similar to that of a truck wheel. In this application, the cups are an interference fit in the housing and a clearance fit for the cone assemblies on the shaft, as this is a rotating outer ring application. This makes it easier to adjust the bearings. The taper roller bearings are commonly used in applications like industrial gearboxes, highway equipment and truck wheels. For the mounting of taper roller bearings, first fit both the cups into the housing using the SKF fitting toolkit. One of the cone assemblies is then placed in its matching cup already in the housing and the end cap is secured. If the bearings are grease lubricated, it should be done at this stage. The bearing should be kept in its protective package until the actual mounting takes place. The housing assembly is placed on the shaft and whilst partially supported, fit the second cone assembly. Fit the retaining washers and hand tighten the lock nut. When adjusting taper roller bearings, it's important to rotate the bearings while hand tightening the nut. This will effectively seat the rollers onto the cone flange, ensuring correct adjustment is achieved. This application is to be adjusted with a small amount of axial clearance. The most common way of measuring the axial clearance is with a dial indicator. It's necessary to rotate, then push and pull the assembly to determine the clearance value. The lock nut is adjusted to achieve the required axial clearance. Depending on the application, preload or clearance values may be required. Refer to the machine manual for the specific adjustment value. Secure the lock nut with the lock washer tab. A final clearance check is required before greasing and fitting the remaining end cap. Remember, the degree of clearance is set on assembly and not at the manufacturing stage of the bearing. Another type of taper roller setup is when a pair of complete bearings are carefully measured and appropriate space is made to give the required clearance or preload between them. This is usually done at the manufacturing stage. It's essential that the spacers and bearings are kept together as a unit. Unlike the individual taper roller bearing, the cup and cone assemblies are matched sets and must not be mixed. In this application, the inner rings and spacer are clamped tight against the shoulder on the shaft. When mounting taper roller bearings, make sure they're always assembled opposed to each other. The wrong configuration can cause severe damage to the equipment. To dismount taper roller bearings, use the fitting procedure in reverse. After removing the end cap, drive back the lock washer tab and unscrew the lock nut.
The taper roller assembly can now easily be removed from the shaft. Taper roller bearings can be adjusted with either axial clearance or preload. When tightening the lock nut, the axial clearance in the application is reduced. Continued tightening of the lock nut at this stage will preload the application. To achieve the correct torque measurement, refer to the machine manual. Heavy preload will reduce bearing life and too much clearance will cause excessive shaft movement and damage to the application.